So welcome to Malaya Pro Labs this Tuesday, July 21st. This is the fifth in the series of webinars that we have been presenting since the beginning of June, part of our LinkedIn learning group. We definitely see a lot of familiar faces. For those of you who have participated in our first two Stay Safe with Malia, our Global Health Safety and Security Protocols, or some of you might have been on the virtual Paradiso Post Cabo site inspection hosted by my colleague Brandy, or we also have had updates from Mexico DMC experts meeting and incentive experts. Again, welcome to those of you who are attending for the very, very first time. Today, we were thrilled to have over 200 meeting professionals sign up for this session on protecting those who travel, evaluating safety and meeting risk with Kevin Coffey. And before we begin, we have a few housekeeping notes. Everyone will stay muted during the presentation. You can enter your questions in the chat box at any time, and my colleague Brandy Wronk, sorry, We'll be conducting the Q&A at the end of the presentation. Thanks to all my colleagues, Brandy, Beatrice, Betsy, Ron, and Carlos, and Carmelina for encouraging you to join us today. So I am so proud to introduce Kevin Coffey. He's an author, a teacher, a duty of care consultant on the subjects of travel and meeting risk reduction for the meeting and travel industries. But he has a very unique background. And while he's been in the meeting and risk reduction industry for over two decades, he also has a background with the Los Angeles Police Department, where he retired as a detective sergeant, and he founded the LAPD's LAS Airport Crimes Detail. Some of you, as we know from the chat, have heard Kevin speak before. He's a frequent speaker at SITE, MPI, other industry events internationally, uh, Kevin's also been featured on CNN, Fox, The Today Show, Oprah, The Travel Channel, uh, different media publications, and today he gets to add to his impressive resume, Malia Pro Lab. So everyone is very anxious to hear what you have to say. So over to you, Kevin. Oh, thank you very much, Tina. Uh, I'm, I'm very uh, fortunate to have been asked to present here for you today. And uh, I was taking a look at the chat box here and saw the registration list. And there's a lot of folks that uh, I've worked with throughout my last 20 years. Uh, and those of you that are new, welcome. A um, uh, little bit of information here, uh, a little bit more about myself. Uh, as you can see, I have two things that might be of interest to you. One is my website, as you can see, kevincoffee.com. But the other thing is my LinkedIn connection, and you'll see that in the show notes uh, later on near the end of the presentation. I encourage those of you uh, within the industry to send me a, a linked up message and a connect up message and connect with me as I post a lot of content uh, that's related to meeting and event risk as well as travel safety on LinkedIn, uh, especially that's new and timely. I just posted four items today that just came out in the news, so that might be of interest and a resource to you. Um, but let's go ahead and kind of move forward into this program. Um, so why should I be concerned about risk? Now, let's set the stage for this. We're only here for about a half hour today, maybe a little bit plus with Q&A. Know that we're not going to talk and cover every issue that's related to meeting and event risk within this time. Uh, this is going to be a, a 30,000 foot level on a couple of key topics that I really want you folks to take a look at and reemphasize within your organization because I know many of you, those of you that I've seen here that have logged in, have addressed this within your organization and your company. Uh, but there's a lot of you that, and, and not maybe on this call, but others that I've worked with in the media and event industry uh, that are a little bit behind the eight ball in this area. So uh, I, I want to kind of go over a few little notes for those, especially those of you that are new within the industry, because we're seeing a lot of that. Um, and taking the idea about why we should be concerned about risk uh, needs to start off with this thought. We need to start having the risk discussion and plan before an event occurs. Um, when I had spoken down at the Plato Carmen uh, Resort there for Malia with, with Site Midwest, and we had talked about this, and those of you that saw me speak there know that this is a, a key factor for me, is that I have worked with corporate clients, and that's the majority of people that I work with that bring me into their organization to, to talk and discuss these issues, uh, have shared with me that 
they haven't on occasion addressed risk until an event actually happens. And that's usually the turning point for meeting professionals that haven't opened up this thought process. So please, if anything you take out of today, you need to start being proactive in this discussion and the plan before an event occurs. Uh, and this is what's going to make the cream rise within our industry. So please take that. But let's look at some other key factors uh, on why you should do this. Uh, first of all, it's expected of you, uh, especially now. And I will throw this out, and, and I, this is a common thread I hear from other meeting professionals, is that when I ask them why they haven't addressed it, and they said, well, because our customers and our clients haven't asked for it. Uh, but you'll see why that's important, especially now, why you should be addressing it just because your clients have not in the past. Know that there's duty of care requirements. We've always had these. They're different throughout the world, especially over in the United Kingdom uh, and Europe and even parts of the United States, depending on each state, uh, between workers' comp requirements and, and other civil requirements. Uh, there are those that come into place. Uh, your client company or your attendees probably expect that you've been doing it all along. Um, this is one that I hear when I talk to my corporate clients that um, branch out and hire with third party uh, organizations and such. Uh, that that's that's really important for them to be able to, uh, to to be able to know that this is going on. But if you're not attending it and your company thinks you are, that could put you in a world of hurt. If you're a CMP, a CIS, CITP, you've got other designations, you've probably been trained on it. Uh, so are you addressing this and putting this stuff forwards for you, right? Um, it can make you or your company stand out from others who aren't addressing it. I see this as a big point of difference, especially today, because, again, the, the companies and the, and the organizations I'm working with, this is a, a, a big issue that's making others stand out in the game especially when everything in the past, as we spoke about in the very beginning, everything was just about the experience and food and beverage and the location. Uh, now to be able to say that you're addressing risk, I think it's going to make you stand out. And, and most importantly, it's the right thing to do. Uh, and we have to be in front of this. Of course, COVID-19 has really pushed this forward for us uh, as far as that. But now let's address the 800-pound gorilla in the room, um, and that's going to be covid now, this has turned our industry, as we know, upside down. Uh, this presentation is not going to be solely dedicated to COVID. Um, as you and I both know, there is a lot of resources that are professional in this area that's going to be more timely, that's going to give you this information that's dedicated to this subject. But uh, as most of the folks I'm working with now on the corporate side, they're just working on trying to get their employees back into the office place. Uh, and we're working with some uh, larger corporations and some midsize that are being more adventurous and planning out three months out for resumption of meetings and such. And, and they're looking at this. So you need to start thinking about this is that when the time comes and meetings and events starts to turn on for your clients, you need to address the coronavirus COVID-19 concerns at that particular point. You need to start working on it on the, on the back end now, but know that this is going to change sometimes daily and what the requirements are going to be, destinations, be it internationally or being domestically here in the United States. So you need to follow up. But let's give you a, a couple little ideas and thoughts uh, just to keep this in place. So how is your organization addressing this today? And how are you going to be addressing it in the future, especially when the meetings and events turn on? The clients I'm working with, uh, so you can get a little bit more granular. They're looking at country, region, and city and site risks for their infection rates. So you should be looking at these same type of ideas and thoughts if it comes up with your customers and your clients or your company uh, as far as that. So these are folks that are really spending their time on that. Others, and this is this is a key, and you'll see me hit on this throughout the rest of this presentation today, um, the, the, working with the hotels, DMCs, and transportation companies. How are they addressing COVID? And you need to be able to address this with your clients and your customers as far as that and having those in-depth conversations and what type of product, written product, and procedures and policies and, and audits do they have in place for this? Uh, and this is the one that, that I really like a lot. And this is organizations that are truly being progressive 
and do their future plans deal with what if scenarios? And this is what's going to make you stand out. Uh, and I would highly encourage this. You'll see an example of this going forward. But th this, that's really the key that you're planning for this uh, type of thing. Now, we, we can't go without saying uh, Malia is sponsoring this event, but uh, Malia has its own stay safe program. Uh, and you're probably well aware of it. Um, it's, it's certified that they have through the Bureau of Veritas. There's different organizations that do these types of things. But uh, I need you to reach out uh, when you're looking at Malia. Talk to your, 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 your customer, your rep, and they have documents they can give you and let them know what they're doing on this. And, again, this is going to be changed uh, on, on, on fluid depending where you're going in the world, but they are going to have a basic set of of uh, their requirements and protocols that they're following. So please take a look at that so you can find out what they're doing. But I wanna go back and Tina spoke about this. Uh, there's been uh, a few prior webinars that they've done relating, uh, revolving around stay safe. So make sure you go back and view some of those. I think you're gonna find those interesting uh, to find out what's going on within the Malia brand. Um, so this is uh, an area I wanna kind of touch out that uh, again, some uh, meeting professionals are working on and others are not. This might be new. And taking a look at the meeting and event risk assessments and doing these for two areas. One is the location that you're going to and the other is going to be the actual event location. You should be doing this part of every event and meeting that you're involved with and having this conversation with your client before the actual event occurs. And a lot of this could have to do with the site selection. Uh, there is a lot of information on this that you're gonna be able to find throughout the various associations you belong to uh, as far as that. But I want you to, to start taking a little bit more vertical look at doing risk assessments in different areas. And I'll touch on a little bit of this on the various types of assessments, but this is one I really want you to kind of put on your to-do list to take a look at. Um, so let's take a look at meeting and event emergency crisis action plans um, that, that they have. So every one of you should have some type of emergency action plan that you're working with within your organization. And I know probably most of you do have this. I know there's a lot of large and there's direct organizations uh, that are on this call here, um, and especially the direct uh, uh, meeting professionals have these, but the smaller to the mid-size planners may not. And even if you do have it, we need to take a look to make sure that they're up to date because these are living documents that each one of these needs to have a breadth that's going to surround each particular event. Uh, so I want to give you a, a little kind of sample kind of what these are. So this is a table of contents for one. It's a very, very basic plan on what it looks like. Um, th this would be for probably for a, for a smaller event that they would have. Uh, this does not have a, an international flavor to it to a certain degree. You're going to see more of that with the medical concerns and related. But this is just giving you a, a rough idea of one on the table of contents as far as that. Um, here's another one I just got as a sample to throw out. This is one that's done by a DMC, Connect DMC. Uh, of course, this is very important that each one of these, if you're doing them, you should have an emergency action plan for the specific location because the action plan, while we'll have very similar pieces that can be used at any meeting or event that you might be involved with, there's going to be specific protocols for the location and the medical and hospital concerns and what those are gonna be and the site maps and such. So again, this is giving you another flavor on kind of what a table of contacts uh, contacts and, and index is going to look like. And there are some that are very much more involved. It really depends on, again, the size of the event and where you're going to be doing this. So this gives you an, another little sample of one. Think about this. Very important for me. And this is when I'm working with my corporate clients and working with their meeting professionals and what they're doing. Does the plan address the types of risks and emergencies that are most likely to occur at your events? So important to have this. And I've worked with some meeting professionals and looked at some plans before, and they have all of these in-depth plans and such, but they have very little that have to do with the most likely scenarios. And even those most likely scenarios, it's maybe a paragraph. And when, especially when it comes to medical concerns, 
Uh, so you should really take a look at this. This is what I recommend for my clients to be able to have on, on meeting professionals that they're working with, that they're prepared in these different areas. Um, another one, who is your point person within your organization? Again, be it if you're a direct planner uh, or you're a third party planner, there should be one person within your company or organization that knows the most about meeting and event risk. Uh, the person that may have written the plan or is responsible for updating the plan on an annual basis. This is what I want to see for level of professionalism, that somebody at least has ownership and then shares it with others within their organization. I, I might even go, and this is one of the things that I've always recommended, is do the people that are involved in this, do they have course certification? And there's different types of, we all know within the meeting and event industry that gives certification in this area. Um, so do you have that? And again, if you're a, a meeting planning organization, a third party, and you're trying to make yourself stand out from others, these are areas that I recommend that you start to have to start building your, your portfolio and your resume as far as what you have in this area. 24-7 uh, access. This goes without saying, but I, I can just riddle off numerous cases where there's been events that have happened uh, pre and post during of, of an event, and all of the emergency guides were packed up and sent back to the headquarters and something's happened and nobody had anything to pull from. So uh, as we know is all of these documents should be available online 24-7 and be able to talk about that and have backup plans for these types of areas. So... That gives you the idea that I want you to start putting those plans together. So hopefully you've got that idea. The other issue is that you need to train on the plan. And one of the things I hate is that when somebody has their, their action plan and they've spent all this time to, to put it together, and of course this is a more in-depth one here that, that, that I've worked on, is that they take it and it sits up on a shelf and it never gets looked at again. That's a company that I don't want to do business with. And those that I work with on the corporate side, I tell them that you don't want to do business with a meeting professional that has done that. I want to see somebody in an organization that, that's got a plan, that's audited, that's refreshed, and they've trained their employees and their representatives and their partners in the most likely responses. So I want to give you an idea. These are some of the, the programs that I work with and I help with corporate clients and we put together these virtual exercises. So let me give you an idea of one of these exercises. You can do these things yourself, but it'll give you an example of what one would be. You've just completed a four day international incentive event. On Friday, all of your attendees, as well as your meeting staff have flown back to the States. Now you worked hard at this event, so you stayed over for a few extra days to relax. It's now Sunday. You decide to take a long walk on the beach and finish it off with a massage at the hotel spa. You leave your cell phone and your room safe as it just feels good to be unconnected for a few hours. You've just returned to your room and begun to reflect on your well-deserved day when you notice the flashing light on your hotel room phone. To retrieve your messages, press 1. To configure an automatic wake-up call, press 3. Message 1. Sunday, 5.45 p.m. Hi, Jennifer. This is Carol Sanchez. I'm the resort's front desk manager. I was told to give you a call by the hotel's convention services director as she's left several messages on your cell. We've been informed that sometime this morning, a hotel guest who was golfing at the resort's course was found unconscious by a group of fellow golfers. The guest was taken by ambulance to a local hospital and is currently in ICU. Since the guest did not have any identification on him when he was found and is still unconscious, it's taken several hours to find out who he is. But it's been now determined that the guest was one of your group's attendees. The hospital has an urgent need to make contact with someone who can give medical authorization as well as to authorize payment for continued treatment. Please call the front desk at extension 100 as soon as you get this message, as we need to confirm that the guest was part of the group. Thank you. To delete the message, press 1. To save the message, press 2. 
So now you have three minutes to come up with the top questions that you would ask the desk manager when you return the call, starting now. So this gives you an idea on what one would look like and how meeting professionals need to start planning and thinking on their feet and having some of these response protocols that they can maybe turn to to be able to respond to this. Now, there's several different injects that you could do in this area, and this is just one. You could see another inject would be you now have three minutes to come up with the three top actions that you would take next. So this gives you an idea what this would look like if you're going to start being more progressive in the area of doing training on how to respond to meeting an event risk. Very, very important key part in this area that I expect all meeting professionals be involved with. Not, and, and this is not just with the, 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 the planner professionals, but also with the supplier partners as well, because I come up with these same issues here. Insurance and consent waivers, another area that comes up. We know you folks know about this. You know that many of you kind of take a look at event insurance. Sometimes it's self-insured with the companies you're working with. But taking a look at the travel insurance where it comes into place, especially if you're doing international events and you need to look at medical and evacuation uh, for some type of emergency event that might happen to one of your attendees. You need to understand this, especially what could happen when things go wrong, just like we did on the previous scenario simulation where you've got someone in the hospital internationally and you need to get cost covered. And how about that? So having these discussions up front. Uh, waivers. It's coming up in every client call that I've had. You need to make sure that if you're looking at this, that your legal staff have looked at these waivers also. I'm not an attorney, but... We all have heard these calls that many times these waivers are not worth the paper they're printed on. Um, but have that conversation. I do think they're a good thing. At least it lets people know the risks they could have on any type of, of event that they're attending to, not just to do with COVID, but just something to be aware of and around. Um, so here's another one I look at, especially for my directs, is how's your risk partnership with your internal stakeholders, such as corporate security, HR, risk managers, TMCs, uh, which are your, tr your travel management companies, and the TRMs, which is the travel risk management companies. Um, directs that are very progressive in this area have relationships with each one of these entities, and there's others also, uh, to be able to find out what resources they can provide to give them to educate the meeting professional on their events, especially when they're doing incentive events or doing international programs. Uh, the same thing if you are a third party, you should be having the same conversations with your planner partners, with each one of them, your DMCs, your transportation companies related. But I'm going to throw it back that you should be asking to have these conversations or conference calls with your corporate clients, so with their corporate security and TMC to find out what resources that they have available and talk about some of these potential scenarios. This is truly engaging your, your corporate partner and your clients in this conversation that some folks might have learned something that have never thought about that. Very, very important. So let's take a look at one of these examples. So let's take a look at your DMC partner. You need to take a look and have these conversations that are they, as each one of your DMCs, because you partner with different DMCs depending on where you're going internationally and even here in the United States domestically, how are each one of them prepared for the various emergencies that could impact your events and your clients? And again, I will see a, a, a big variance and a wide berth on their response plans between the two. So again, this is a whole separate conversation doing a, it's almost like a, um, it's, it's a pre-con and it's a, it's a site inspection for your DMCs and your transportation partners to find out how they're going to respond to these different emergency events and doing the old Ronald Reagan trust but verify and looking at their plans and having these conversations and working with them. Um, and talking about site inspections, this was the old way, and this was when the, most of the meeting professionals I've worked with have been focused around rate and ambiance and service and food and beverage, because again, we spoke about that. That's what the client wanted. But more now than ever, I need you to start taking a look at the security and safety aspects of the site inspection. I really think that, that meeting professionals that are in this realm, they, they, those that are standing out from the rest are weaving in the security and safety concerns. Now, 
this is a very, very, just a, this is a bad example, but just one of just the only type of information that was asked by a meeting professional in the area of safety when it came for one particular property or any property they looked at. Um, the, the, you do not want to have this as an example because when you take a look at other resources that are out there to ask more in-depth questions about safety and health and risk within properties and resorts and meeting locations and event locations, there's a lot of resources you can turn to through your various associations you belong to, uh, through the different meeting companies and such. And this is just giving you a sample on just one of these areas. There could be over 500 questions that could be asked. And again, you wouldn't ask all these questions. You need to talk to the client to find out which one of these are important to them. But uh, these are areas I'd recommend you really take a look at. Um, I want to go back to, matter of fact, many of you saw me speak at the Smart Midwest when they brought me to speak at the Smart Forum down at the Paradisus Playa del Carmen. Um, and I spent several hours actually doing the security site inspection at that property and walked through some of the meeting professionals who were with me as we walked through us to kind of give them an idea what one looks like. I actually went behind the uh, the scenes and talked to the security director and looked at their plans that they had. We actually did a tour of the property and looked at all of their AED devices and we did spot inspections just to find out when was the last time that they were inspected. Uh, I can tell you that I've done some of these spot inspections at different properties, uh, both domestic and internationally, and found some of them hadn't been inspected in a couple years. They just forgotten about it. I'm not saying that they weren't inspected, but somebody forgot to update the tag on the actual device. Uh, actually took a look at, at the property to find out how many people are trained on AED uh, usage that's going to be on duty at any particular time. Uh, it's very unique on, on sometimes how vertical you can go in this area. It depends, again, on your client's needs. But I'll let you know where we took this. We actually took a tour and took a drive to the local hospital to understand how that process would, how that process would look if somebody was hospitalized. So we've walked through it and understand that type of area and how long it would take the ambulance to get there. Matter of fact, we found out that at this property, they had their own ambulance that was on site there to take you to the hospital. So there's some very unique areas that you could take a look at. Um, how are you marketing meeting risk? Now, this is more for the, the third party uh, professionals. Um, I'm seeing some very inventive ways that some third party uh, meeting companies, as well as DMCs and transportation companies, are putting this together. Uh, I would take a look at this to see if this would fit your organization. And even if you're doing this as a direct member, take a look at this conversation and how you're having it internally within your organization. Well, we've talked about a, a, a lot of content here um, and we've come to the end. So where do we turn to find additional resources? Number one, your most important one is gonna be reach out to your fellow meeting and event incentive professionals. Have that conversation which, with, which, with your closest friends and partners and ask about that. You would be surprised what you can get talking to them as well as your, your, partner, so your supplier partners and having this conversation with each of them. Reach out to each of the associations you belong to, and some of you belong to several associations, and find out what areas that they have that's within that, and you will find a wide variety. Um, I also want you to reach out to your supplier network to find out what associations they might belong to and what resources they might have in their association that you don't have access to. You would be surprised there on, on what you could find. Um, Staying up on what's relevant and what's new. Uh, again, I encourage you to reach out and connect with me on LinkedIn and you'll, you'll get information such as, this, such as this when it's listed out. Hopefully all of you have seen the new standards and safety and business travel that got published about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. Uh, has to do with all of these categories. It was done by meeting professionals to give some types of standards. You can see where it's broken down here in these different areas. You should be looking at this to help modify your emergency plans, to help take a look at your inspection protocols. Again, just one area on staying relevant and up to date in the different areas. Um, we talked about this, about uh, going into these different areas. 
looking at the emergency certifications and looking at the COVID resources. Um, at the end, uh, what I encourage you, if you reach out, connect with me on LinkedIn. I'll send you a link with a bunch of other resources that you can turn to, uh, and that's going to be available to you. But I know you can find a lot of these on your own. I've just put together a small list for you. So this is my my website here again, kevincoffee.com. Uh, I encourage you to kind of connect up and take a look if any of you folks are interested in uh, addressing meeting event risk and travel safety in the future once meeting events resume. I'd be glad to have that conversation. Reach out to your Malia uh, sales representative. Uh, I work with a lot of them and answer some of their questions and such. And again, this is where it shows you the importance of networking. I work a lot with Tina and, and Brandy, uh, partners on mine, and so they'll sometimes throw questions out to me. This is the importance of having your network to be able to turn to. So hopefully that kind of gave you an idea. We're going to be going into Q&A very shortly, but I wanted to throw it back over to Tina uh, so you can take it back to you. Kevin, thank you. And yeah, thank you. You really opened our minds to many new questions that we need to ask and the different kinds of critical thinking that is, is so much more important today and then going forward, because who knows? Um, so don't go away just yet. Um, we are going to do Q&A in just a moment, um, but I want to remind you that our next Stay Safe with Malia series will be on Tuesday, August 4th. Might be the most entertaining one yet because it is on entertainment and guest experience. Um, we'll have Sadri Alexander, um, who's our senior manager here in the Americas. And the only thing I'm going to say in anticipation of this for you to sign up is did you ever imagine using hula hoops for social distancing? So on Tuesday, August 4th, you can find that out. But now we will go to the chat, and my colleague Brandy will help uh, moderate that. The session is being recorded. Uh, it's recorded both, uh, obviously, sound and video, so you'll have access to that on the Malia LinkedIn community page, um, and it, or as well as all the recordings of the previous sessions that you may not have been able to attend. So, Brandy, I would like to turn it over to you for a question for Kevin. Yeah, I think um, Brittany Glass asked a question. Um, will we have access to the questions after this meeting? Um, so the answer to that is yes, and I, I did put in the um, chat box a place that you could click to connect with Kevin Coffee, both his website and his LinkedIn. Um, and, of course, we will have access to the recording and video probably in the next few days. All right, um, Bonnie Slater Demont says to Kevin, well, I think it was to Kevin, what was the name of the SOS meeting guide you talked about? So um, what we can do is let's go ahead and, and put this back here uh, for you folks there. Um, so uh, this is the guide. You can, you can Google this on your own, the standards of safety and business travel. It will come up there and you'll be able to find it. Or again, or if you just uh, shoot me the, the LinkedIn request, I'll send you this along with other ones there in the, uh, in, in the chat there so you'll have. Okay, excellent. Kevin, I think you, you totally blew him away because I don't see any other questions. That was an easy one. Any, anybody else? That I didn't expect. I thought there'd be more questions. <laughs> oh, here we go. One more. Sorry. Um, so, uh, Jay Slater, Jay Slater um, what certifications do you recommend, Kevin? Well, so I'm not going to recommend any particular uh, certification. Um, they're all they're different but similar. You just need to take a look at it and see what fits for your level of professionalism and for your company and organization. Uh, th there's two that are probably the most familiar within the meeting and event industry, and that's gonna be one with MPI, and the other one is Association for Destination Executives, ADMEI, I believe. Um, they have the two that are out there that are probably the most known within your industry. There are some other ones that are out there that they have in training programs that other organizations put together. Those are two that you can start with. Excellent. Um, I do have a question from um, Jan Capanegro. I hope I said your last name right. Um, so she's curious. Is there a standard if someone is injured on a trip? Um, what, do you rec what is the recommended protocol for that company rep to stay with the independent contractor? Okay, so outstanding question. And this is where I'm going to throw it back to you. And this is where it's going to have this conversation with each one of your clients and customers to find out 
what their responsibilities are because each organization and company is going to have a different response in these areas. And that's where you need to have that conversation to have that client give you this information and what they expect you to do. You cannot be the, the end all expert to be able to come up with each one of these when the corporate client is going to have their own resources and protocols, especially when it comes to internationally. Uh, so, you might, we might want to take a look at that. And then if you want to go outside of that, I recommend you talk to your other meeting professionals that you've worked with, especially on your DMC side, and find out what protocols they've put in place to start building these into what your customer is going to find reasonable and expectations. Great question, especially to look at it for international events. Very good. Thank you, Kevin. Right. Yeah, as I said, I might add for a quick second. Um, Jan, you should also, you know, I mean, your DMC, depending on, you know, again, when in the phase of a program something is happening is the resource. But also, like, if you were at one of our Paradisus resorts, we have in-staff medical 24-7. We have specific private hospital network that we take people to, not to just the public medical facilities. So, you know, each hotel chain or property you need to interview them and know what their process is. Got you. And, and uh, Brandy, I can see the, the next one here that they have. Um, so that's the question about the major challenges that hotels in Latin America may face in an effort to comply with safety guidelines, taking into consideration economic political limitations that may get uh, in the way as availability of technology, safety equipment, and human resources. Big question, but I'm going to give you a short answer that, that uh, again, is putting it back with your client. Because this is so fluid and changing, when you work with your corporate clients, you heard me talk about this, you need to bring into the conversation one that involves both the travel management company that the corporate client works with, as well as their travel risk management company. I find a lot of third-party planners don't have that connection in that conversation because usually the, the large to mid-sized companies will have a contract with a travel risk management company that can answer all of these questions and take a look at each country, area, and region to be able to help that decision to be made with your client. Um, there's only a few meeting planning companies that actually have relationships with travel risk management companies. And those are typically ones that if you haven't heard of them, International SOS, World Aware, there's, a, there's about five that are big players in the market. Uh, but you should be having those conversations with those professionals that can really look at that because it's a fluid question. Brandy, okay, back thank to you. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, no, that's good. And I think Dana just uh, made a comment, which is a great, um, a great comment about if you're in a, in a foreign country, it's great to have a translator. Um, and Tina, I don't know if you want to talk about the CARES program a little bit that we have at Malia. Well, with, you know, back to, um, as I said, we work with a private hospital network called Hospitin, and that's actually uh, in Europe, in parts of Europe, as well as throughout Punta Cana. Uh, Mexico, and we would always, I did have, um, actually Sable, who's on the call, knows, I won't mention her company, but uh, I had an executive have a health emergency, and someone from our team, as well as the DMC, accompanied them, stayed with them um, throughout the process in the emergency room and in the hospital, so that they had that language translation, felt comfortable, and not just being uh, sort of dropped off, you know, and admitted into the facility. And instead of having a very negative perception of the hotel, the destination, the program, uh, she came away with one of the best, you know, the best possible feelings and warmth, you know, about how she was taken care of. So Interesting. the kind of thing to explore, yeah, with, again, with the property that you're, you're taking a look at. Yeah, absolutely. And that's where, matter of fact, I talk about, I, I go back to the inspection that we did there on your property that in Cancun of Plato Carmen, um, having that 
experience and having the, uh, the, the time to put forth to ask these types of questions when you take the behind the scenes tour and asking these, very, very important to do. You know, uh, Tina, and you brought this up, and it's funny, I didn't touch this, but uh, we talked about the importance of the emergency plans coming up with these. You and I had talked about the importance, even like even the transportation companies. How prepared are you that if one of the tour buses that you're, you're contracting with going internationally, uh, and you have a group, and you have maybe two tour buses that shut down, um, and it's 90 degrees outside, and have you tested that uh, stress test on that system to find out uh, if they're going to be able to get replacement buses, and how long is that going to be? And have you actually verified this information on the day of the event? So there's a lot of these ideas and thoughts that you could start putting into your plans uh, to start working with your supplier partners there. Excellent. At this time, yeah. we have no more questions, Tina. So I'll turn it back to you and Kevin. All right. I'm just waiting for some, some chat notes to throw, that scroll in here. It looks like uh, just a lot of thank yous for uh, being here and sharing this time. So as I said, we were thrilled to have Kevin because he's been on much larger stages than Malia Prolab. Um, again, Brandy, do you want to put up one last time at the end here the um, Kevin's website and uh, the LinkedIn so that people know how to reach him for some specific questions that they may want to follow up with? Great. Sure thing. Thank you. Thank you, Brandy. Kevin, thanks, Brandy. Thanks, everybody on our team and our production team uh, for making this happen who are behind the scenes. And all of you, we had, I think, over 120 people at the uh, peak of the fall, um, which is, I think, our biggest yet. So it was. Awesome. Thank you all. Yeah, please mark August 4th um, for the next time around. And we hope to see you then. And tell a friend or two. <laughs> Have a great day. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. -bye.